What's up, YouTube? This is Ghost Rider from the radio room this evening. Thought I'd bring you a video here on six basic steps to tuning a transmitting tube amplifier. So stick with me. Okay, so here we have on station a 1991 vintage Ameritron AL1200 amplifier. It's a thing of beauty. This amplifier has one 3CX1200 A7 transmitting tube. Okay, we've got our transceiver set up. We'll be using an FTDX3000 today. This is the emulator on the computer, which I'll be referring to. The actual transceiver is right over here. We'll also be using the Palstar AT2K antenna tuner. This is located between the amplifier and the antenna. And we'll be doing the demonstration on the 40 meter band. So let's get to it. All right, step number one. I'm gonna turn the amplifier on then allow the tube to warm up for a time that's specified by the manufacturer. For the AL1200, that's 10 seconds. For your amplifier, that may be something around two to three minutes or more. Be sure you abide by that since operating the amplifier before that time can damage the tube. And then the next thing we're gonna do is set the band switch for the operating band we intend to operate on and the plate and load controls for the approximate settings as specified by the manufacturer for the band of operation. So if we go and look at our amplifier, we have set the band switch for the operating band of 40 meters and we have set the plate control to 40 meter band and the load control to the recommended setting per Ameritron. Step number two, select a clear frequency near the frequency where you'd like to operate on the transceiver, which is the radio, and tune the transceiver for the lowest SWR output with the amplifier and bypass mode using approximately 25 watts of power and the tuner between the amplifier and the antenna. So here we're gonna tune the radio itself without using the amplifier at all, without keying the amp, and use the external antenna tuner. So on the radio, I'm now going to uh, check my output carrier power, uh, verifying I am in the CW mode for this step. I'm going to modify my output power here and you can see my carrier level in the upper right hand side of the screen. I'm gonna set that for 25 watts. And then we can go to the meter and check for lowest SWR. Okay, here at the meter, I have set my inductor and my input and output settings for the approximate settings that they should be for the 40 meter band. I'm in the low range setting, so let's check the Let's check the SWRs for this condition when I key the radio at 25 watts. Okay, almost no reflected power. We'll do it again. Almost no reflected power, so we're good. Also, if you have a high power scale on your watt meter, at this point, you wanna go ahead and change the scale on your watt meter to the high power range for the next steps. Step number three, go ahead and set the transceiver output power to between 15 and 25 watts and set the amplifier for the CW mode. You could also use FM or AM mode on your actual trans transceiver, just as long as you produce a carrier uh, when the transceiver is keyed. Then you're gonna go ahead and key the transceiver and adjust the plate control first until maximum output power and watts is noted on the amplifier meter or the meter between the amplifier and the antenna, your choice. Immediately then adjust the load control to maximize the output power by increasing the load amount which is usually turning the load control clockwise until a slight power reduction is noted in the watt meter. Why? This decreases grid current. 
Do not turn the load control the other way as this will increase the grid current and then unkey the transceiver. Okay, going back through step three on the actual radio, I'm gonna verify that I'm still, that my power setting is still in the low power range. So I'm still at 25 watts of carrier level. I'm still in CW mode here on the radio. I now go to the meter or the uh, tuner and I'm going to set the scale for the high range. Go to the amplifier and I'm going to note that I'm in the CW mode. I'm going to flip from standby to operation mode. I'm going to make sure that my meter is set for power on the scale and on the meter using the low values on the scale toward the bottom. We're going to read this meter and output power as we go through this step. All right, I'm now gonna key the radio and I'm gonna adjust for maximum output power. So let's go ahead and key the radio, 25 watts. I note that I am about uh, 400 watts output power and I'm going to adjust the plate control. So I peek that out, which I've done. And now I'm gonna go to the load control and I'm going to adjust that Till we peek it out and it, I'm going clockwise and it just starts to fall off in power and I'm going to unkey the radio. Okay, step number four. We're going to increase the transceiver power by a factor of two. So because I was at 25 watts to start with, I'm going to increase that now to 50 watts. I'm going to repeat step three above, basically adjusting the plate and the load controls until I see maximum output power. So now back at the radio, I'm going to go ahead and increase my carrier power to twice the low setting where I used for the initial tuning. That'd be 50 watts in this case. Okay, carrier's at 50 watts. Come back over to the amplifier. Take a look at that power meter. I'm going to key the radio. Now I'm going to adjust the plate. To peak the plate. And now I'm going to adjust the load. To peak the load. We'll turn it clockwise until it starts to fall off just slightly and I'm going to unkey the radio. Okay step number five we're going to increase the transceiver power by a factor of two again. In this case it'll be somewhere between 60 and 100 watts it doesn't have to be exactly two but at this step you're going to increase the transceiver output to the power level where you intend to operate. So in my case I'm going to adjust that to 85 watts. And then we're gonna to touch up the plate control as the last polish up to the tuning process. So back to the radio we go. I'm gonna increase our carrier power. In my case, I'm gonna to go to 85 watts, which is gonna be my operating power. There we go. I'm gonna transition back to the amplifier. I'm going to key the radio. I'm going to peak the plate control for maximum power. I'm now going to peak the load control for maximum power clockwise until it slightly falls off. Ever so slightly, right there. And I'm going to unkey the radio. As a last step to polish that off, I'm gonna key the radio and adjust the plate control one last time. And 
there we go. At 85 watts, we're now outputting about 1400 watts of output power. Last but not least, we're gonna to proceed to operate in CW mode. So if I was gonna use Morse code, I wouldn't change anything. I would just stay where I am and proceed to operate on the frequency of choice near where I tuned up. Now on the low bands such as 80 meter and 40 meter, if you move much up and down the frequency uh, range there on the band, you may have to do a retune uh, it's not so much of a problem when you get up around uh, 20 meter and higher. So just take note of that. Always watch your meters. All right, but if I was going to operate in single sideband or voice mode, I would go ahead and make sure that the amplifier is switched to the SSB mode before operating. And this is a very important note. It's important to assure your transceiver SSB drive power it's also set to no more than the maximum CW drive power level at which you tuned. Because some radios remember power level by mode. For example, if I tune in CW mode at 85 watts, but I previously had my SSB mode set at 100 watts and I just switch over to SSB, I'll be driving with 100 watts that I didn't tune for and that's not good. So you wanna check that before you operate. So back to the amplifier, we're now ready to operate. I'm gonna operate in SSB mode. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna make sure that the SSB switch is switched to the SSB setting. Okay. On the radio, I'm gonna recheck my drive power. I've now switched to lower sideband. And let's just recheck the drive power for the SSB mode, make sure Where we are, oh, I was at 95 watts. That's more than what I tuned for and more than where I tend to operate. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that on down to 85 watts. Now we're ready to go. I hope this short video has been helpful to you on the topic of tuning a transmitting tube amplifier. Till next time, this is Ghost Rider saying 73.